In today's video, we are gonna do one exciting thing that I've been waiting for a really long time. I'm gonna tra transform my children's Poang IKEA chairs and give them a new facelift. I'm gonna take off the old uh, cover that has been covered in stains and it's really yucky and put a new fresh fabric on it. So I'm really excited. I hope you are too and let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lasma and I'm very happy that you clicked on today's video. First of all, I want to start off by saying a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed in these last few weeks. I am so excited to see all of you here and reading your comments and your feedback in general. It's super helpful, so thank you very much. If you're new, then I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content. I post tutorials and different makeovers, so I will continue doing that in the future. And if you like that, then definitely subscribe and hit that like button. And here we go. I will start off by taking off this fabric from the original padding as I will be using it for the new cover. Um, I've seen some tutorials where people just uh, make a slip cover for the whole thing, then don't take it apart. I would love to do it, but mine is in such a bad state that I really don't want to leave it under the new fabric. So I will reuse the original fabric, um, the original padding that is not the fabric, and we'll make a, a new cover for it. So let's open all the seams and take the padding out from the old fabric. So now I have taken apart my cover. I have the front part, the back part, the pockets for the upper back part and the lower one to secure it onto the frame, the cushion fabric, and of course the padding. So this one we're gonna put on the side for now. And this part, all this fabric we need to press really well so it's super flat because we will need to put this on the new fabric to trace it. So I have laid all the pieces down on my new fabric and I have folded it in half. You can put each piece separately if you have it as one whole and, um, and then just cut it out. But to save time, I will do it like this. I have folded in half the back part of the pocket and the and the other back pocket that will fasten with the Velcro. And just the front piece of the point because they're the same size. So now I need to pin everything down so it doesn't move and cut it out. You don't even need to trace it. If, if you want, you can, but it's actually faster to just pin it down and cut it. Okay, now everything is cut out, looking great. And first we take this piece of fabric. That is for the back part, the cushion that will go over um, the chair. And first we need to fold a centimeter down, press it, and then another centimeter down as we will sew over it, we'll top stitch it. So let's do that. So I have double folded it and pressed it, so it's nice and clean. And time to top stitch it. I will actually make the thread length longer, four millimeters, four millimeters. And we need to sew around one centimeter 
from the edge, but so it definitely goes over that folded edge. Okay, don't forget to secure the thread. So when you have done this, take this smaller piece of fabric, the smallest one that you have, and we need to hem the edge. So I'm gonna change my stitch to a zigzag. I'm gonna use it so it doesn't fray. And let's do that. You can also do it on your serger if you want to. I just don't wanna change the machines and I find it easier just to use a zigzag in this case. So when you have done that, fold it down one centimeter and press it, but fold it only once this time. So I have pressed it down and now I've taken the original slip and I put it on my new piece of fabric and will mark it where the Velcro starts and ends. And you measure it and it will be around 30 centimeters, as if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's actually 30 and a half, but half centimeter won't change it. So you can use that old one, but I will take a new one because I think if this one is pretty worn down because I've taken it on and off a lot of times and washed it. So I'm taking a new Velcro. Now I need to attach it to the new piece of fabric. I don't have the exact size, but actually in the long run, it doesn't change anything. So I have a one that's a bit wider. So once you have pinned it down, we need to sew all around the, the Velcro to secure it. So let's do that with a regular stitch. So go back to your regular stitch and sew about one millimeter from the edge. So if you can move your needle, just move it by one millimeter. When you get to the end of it, you can just lift your presser foot up. First have your needle in, then the presser foot up and turn it, sew it. Again, stop, press a uh, needle in, press her foot up and turn it again. And at the end, don't forget to secure it. So the Velcro is in now. We need to take the back piece that you cut out. Okay, see that the pattern is going the right way. Take the upper pocket and put it left side on the right side. And pin it to the main fabric. So I have pinned it down and don't worry if this doesn't exactly match because like this part was quite outstretched, you know, it has been stretching for years now. And so it, it was a little bit deformed, but I do want to make it looser. Otherwise, if it's like super tight, if it matches the back part exactly, it doesn't have any, any room to move, it will be very hard to put it on the chair. So that's fine if you copy your old one and it's a bit bigger than the back piece. It doesn't exactly line up, that's fine. And now when I have pinned it, I will sew a half centimeter from the edge. So half of my presser foot. Okay, so sew just with your regular stitch all around.
and definitely take your time on the curve because it might be a little bit tricky so don't rush it it's quite important so when that is done I'll take that smaller part the one with velcro and I need to put it on the back part as well so it will go on the same way because this is the back and it will go over the seat and this will attach to the IKEA seat so you need to put the left side to the right side and pin it and sew it the same way as the upper pocket and now I need to sew it all around the edge Now the back part is ready and time for the front. So we take our front piece and the padding that we removed from our old cover. So I will just put this on top of the padding and it will not match exactly because um, this padding, it will like fold in if you understand what I mean that's the way it was on the original that's the way i tend to keep it so just approximately pin it to the edges so it goes more or less like the padding and also i want to keep the original lines i will top stitch it though the same way as it was done for the original so i will put down the pattern accordingly so i will see more or less where where the lines, where the stitching was done. And now I will sew again one half a centimeter from the fabric and it's easier to sew on the fabric rather than on the padding so do it on the right side this time again pay attention to the edges the same way as before just go slowlier and see the curve and it's better to look at the front of your presser foot as a guide so where it goes there you will sew it because otherwise it gets a little bit confusing where exactly you have to look to make a nice curve but just look at the front of your presser foot I look at the right one and see it guides me along the edge nicely so it turns out nice So when that is done, now I want to, want to top stitch it the same way as it was done on the original. And on the padding, actually, you can see all the lines. So I want to transfer them on top of the fabric. So yes, this time we'll be drawing on top of it. I will use soap so it's not as visible and it will later get washed away. So I'll just transfer these same lines you can it you can actually put as many lines as you want to and maybe make your own pattern on top of it I just really want it to look the same way as I did but or you can skip the lines altogether I would suggest to use the the line that is the the horizontal one because it will make make the curve nicer uh, once you install it on the chair but the rest of them, they're optional, but they definitely give this nice look to the uh, cover. And the same way with the vertical lines.
So I have my lines drawn on, on the fabric. And now I will go to the straight stitch and make it longer, four centimeters. And we top stitch. And now, when the front is finished, we take our back side piece, check if everything is okay. The pattern is going the same direction, both sides, and pin right side to the right side. And this is the final moment for our cover. So pin those together, go all around and at the bottom of your cover, we need to leave oh, an opening so we can turn it inside out. So pin that together and leave, I would say, you know, some 20, 20 centimeter opening. The main thing is just to get the, the corners right and then where you have the straight sewing, this is the part that you can leave open. So I will start sewing at the bottom so I can end at the place where I have my opening. So again, start at the corner. It will be very thick at this time. So you might actually need to lift your presser foot like really up. It won't actually help to just, just raise it. So you can actually do like this or even here because it is so thick. All right, so let's go around again, half centimeter, half of your presser foot. And on regular two and a half millimeter stitch. Don't forget about securing. So now that we have sewn all around the edge, it's time to pull it out. I'll go to the corner and just slowly get it out. So looking really nice. And now we have to close this. Close this all. <clears throat> So we fold it in and I'll take the pins and just pin it closed. And now we need to close it again. So one millimeter from the edge, so it will not be as apparent and 2.5 millimeter stitch. So the cover is finished, but there is still one more thing. I want to make the cushion and we have fabric for it. So this will be the last step and then it will be done. So for the cushion, we take the fabric pieces, the only two left, place right sides together. Again, see how your fat pattern goes and pin it together. The original actually had these nice flaps. So sewing them 
uh, closing the, the hole would be easier. Closing the opening. So I will use that definitely. So again, we will need to sew all around except these flaps. Okay, and again, half a centimeter from the edge, just like we did before. So I turn it inside out, but before I put in the padding, I want to steam it so it's nice and tidy. And also we need to fold down these flaps and then we will top stitch it and close this opening. And now we can place the padding inside the pillowcase. Just check how it was. All right. And now let's pin this opening so it doesn't come open again. And let's top stitch it um, again, a one, about one millimeter from the edge. All right, and now the last thing that I wanna do, which is again optional, but it was on the original and I think it looks really nice, is to stop stitch all around the edge, again, about half a centimeter, so half of your presser foot. And we'll do the same thing on the main seat cushion. Just make sure that your padding is evenly spread out. And I will again put it, my stitch length at four millimeters because it is a decorative stitch and it looks nicer when it's longer. And now I will do the same thing on the main mattress. And yes, I will go over the, those flaps as well, those pockets. Oops, some threads left. So don't worry, it is the same way on the original and it still fits, so this should be good. Again, half a centimeter and four millimeter stitch. So now I have to attach the cushion to the cover and that means that I have to pin it down and sew it. And this actually might be a challenge because it gets really thick. But don't worry, it's doable. So we try to sew where we have top stitched it just now, where we did half a centimeter from the edge. It's actually almost impossible to Pin it down, but don't give up. All right, so now we try to get it under. Yeah. Mm, not an easy task. Okay. So let's see how my sewing machine will handle this. I don't even need to put it down. It doesn't, didn't change its position at all. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Oh, oh. You might actually need to go like really slow or even take a denim needle for this because it is so thick. 
but you know, easy does it. And it's somehow managing with it. I want to tell you one thing, if you struggle to get it under or if your machine is not performing well, just use a simple thread and needle and hand sew it. It will be definitely much better. And as well, you have already top stitched this part, so it will not be very visible that you did it with your hands. So better to do it easier than struggle and break your machine. <laughs> and it's ready yay <laughs> i'm so excited i'm really happy how it turned out i'm happy to give my old furniture a new life and i think my kids will be excited as well about this new pattern because it does look so much better than the old stained one and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i really hope that if you have a a lonely, unhappy Poang chair sitting somewhere in your kid's room, then you will give it a makeover and make it more cheerful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. You can leave a comment, feedback, any suggestions that I might do in my future videos. And if you like my channel, if you like this type of content, do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up i really do appreciate that and until another video see you soon goodbye